people go, there lived at the foot of the mountain a poor farmer and his aged widowed mother. They owned a bit of land that supplied them with food and their humble lives were peaceful and happy. At that time, Shinano was governed by a despotic leader who, though a brave warrior, had a great and courageous shrinking from anything suggestive of failing health and strength. One day, he sent out a cruel proclamation. All the aged people must be killed because they are so useless, the governor exclaimed. The poor farmer loved his aged mother with tender reverence, and the order filled his heart with sorrow. But no one ever thought a second time about obeying the mandate, the mandate of the governor. So, with many deep, hopeless sighs, the youth prepared for what at that time was considered the kindest most of death. Just at sundown, when his day's work was ended, he lifted his helpless old mother to his back and started on his painful journey up to the mountain. The road was long and steep. He plodded steadily on the shadow, growing deeper and deeper until the moon round and clear rose above the mountain top and peered and peered pityingly through the branches upon the youth tolling onward and peered pityingly through the branches upon the youth toil, toiling onward his head bent with weariness and his heart heavy with sorrow. The narrow road was crossed and recrossed by many paths, many hunters and woodcutters. In some places, they mingled in a confused puzzle, but he gave no heed. One path or another, it mattered not. And he went climbing blindly upward, ever upward, toward the high bare summit of what is known as Obatsuyama, the mountain of the abandoning of the aged. The eyes of the old mother were not so dim, but they noted the reckless hastening from one path to another, and her loving heart grew unconscious. Her son did not know the mountain's many paths and his return might be one of danger. So she forth her hand and snapping the twigs from the brushes as they passed, she quietly dropped a handful every few steps of the way so that they climbed. The narrow path behind then was dotted at frequently intervals with tiny pines of twigs. At last, the summit was reached. He wrapped her painted coat more closely around the stooping shoulders and with tearful eyes and an aching heart said farewell. The trembling voice of mother was full of unselfish love as she gave her last injunction. Let not Thine eyes be blind, my son, she said. The mountain road is full of danger. Look carefully and follow the path which hold the piles of twigs. They will guide you to the familiar way further down. The son's surprised eyes looked back over the path, then at the poor old and at, then at the poor old, shriveled hands, all scratched and soiled by their work of love, his heart smote him, and bowing on the ground, he cried out loud. Oh, on 
Honorable Mother, thy kindness trusts my heart. I will not leave thee. Together we will follow the path of twigs, and together we will die. Once more he shouldered his burden and hastened down the path through the shadows and the moonlight to the little hut in the valley. Beneath the kitchen floor was a closet for food, which was covered and hidden from view. There the son hid his mother, supplying her with everything needful and continually watching and fearing. Time passed and he was beginning to feel safe when again the despot sent forth heralds, being an unreasonable order, seemingly as a boast of his power. I would like you to make a rope made out of ashes and past it when and past it tomorrow. The entire province trembled with dread. The order must be obeyed, yet who in all Shinano would could came could make a rope of ashes? One night in great distress the son whispered the news to his hidden mother. Mother, the governor ordered to make a rope out of ashes. How would we make that one? Wait, she said. I will think. I will think. One day, she told him what to do. Make a rope of twisted straw, she said. Then stretch it upon a row of flat stones and burn it there on a windless night. And then he made one, a rope out made out of ashes. Alas, alas, cried the farmer. The truth must be told, and with deep bows he related his story. The daimyo listened and then meditated in silence. Finally, he lifted his hand. Shinano needs more than strength of you, he said gravely. At that, I should have forgotten the well-known saying, With the crown of snow, there comes a wisdom. That very hour, the cruel Daimyo abolished the order and custom drifted into so far a past that only the legends remain. And that's the story of the aged matter by Matsuo Basho.